my beautiful friends, it's your girl Kathy, aka Nurse Chow. I'm an ICU nurse in Las Vegas. And in today's video, we are going over, is it safe to travel to Las Vegas during the pandemic? And how safe is it really to visit the Strip during this crazy time that's going on in the world right now? What safety precautions has Las Vegas been taking in order to ensure our guest safety? We are going over all of that as I have recently stayed on the Las Vegas Strip from check-in to check-out and everything in between regarding pools, nightclubs, day clubs, gambling, all of that. So let's get into it. If you're here from Faces and Aces LV podcast, I will be going over all of the questions that we unfortunately did not get to answer on that podcast at the very end of this video. If you have not listened to it already, it was such a great episode. Chris and I went over how it is to be in Las Vegas, the different precautions you can take to stay safe and healthy, how things have changed. So if you haven't given a listen, I will link it in the description. For parking, most of the hotels are doing free self-parking. And of course, valet is still an option and they have increased the hygienic and safety measures for valet parking. That is always an option but you know free 99 it really doesn't get any better than that. And once you walk in, you see a lot of hand sanitizers everywhere. There's also sometimes hand washing stations where you can wash your hands. Some of the hotels require thermo scanning devices to scan your body temperature, whether that's with your wrist or non-invasive, it's just like a camera that kind of takes just like that body scan of you. And also if you are needing a mask because face coverings are now required in Nevada. So if you do need one and you forgot one at home, the hotels do have it and can usually provide it for you. When you're checking in, there are spots clearly marked on the floor that allow for social distancing to ensure that customers are at least six feet away from each other. They have made this process as touchless as possible. And what I mean by that is they have now a plexiglass in between you and the front desk agent. And also when you're passing the card or change back and forth, they have like a little plate that you just put it so that you're not touching this other person. And also they offer these check-in kiosks to the side where you can of course not interact with another agent and just do it electronically that way. From what I experienced when I stayed at the win is the front desk agent actually sanitized the entire station after every single customer and changed gloves after each customer which is just whew, fantastic precautions to be taking. For gambling, this will vary casino to casino, but I have seen plexiglass in between the players when they're sitting at table games, also plexiglass in between the player as well as the dealer, which I think is great. They're also not using all of the tables to have the dealers and to have multiple players. They have shut down a lot of the tables. Some of them have spread them out, which I think is great. Other casinos have not, and they've put them all together, which is probably not so great. I have seen that for the slot machines. I thought that they would have maybe every other one open and have the one in between players be out of service, but I have not seen that completely. I have seen that there is a lot of space to socially distance when you are at slot machines because there are just so many open and available. I would just say, just take it upon yourself to be away from others. You will see that a lot of poker rooms are closed or lots of big gaming areas are closed for right now. And also I have noticed that people are still smoking in casinos. Another question is, is cocktail service still happening when you're gambling? Yes, cocktail service is in effect and all of the employees are wearing masks. Now the elevators have these signs that clearly say only four people allowed per elevator and some hotels actually have markings on the floor where each person should stand. Usually when you go in there everyone kind of knows to take a corner each but I have seen people break this rule and I've seen more than four people in an elevator but hopefully people will follow the directions and if you see a lot of people in the elevator just take the next one. The room was gorgeous and seemed very clean. There was a little seal on the outside of the door that said that it was clean and sanitized for my safety. Once I went in, everything was very tidy. Hopefully everything was sanitized. I do believe and trust that it was. There was also a letter that talked about all of their hygienic processes that they have put into place to ensure everybody is safe. In the room itself, it actually came with face masks, alcohol wipes, and hand sanitizer, which I thought was really, really cool. Everything in the room, actually, they have tried to convert to touchless. They've installed Alexas into the room. So you're touching fewer things in the room itself. And you basically tell Alexa, Alexa, open the curtains. Alexa, open the curtains. Okay. 
I would say if you are really, really, really nervous about it, bring your own Clorox wipes or disinfecting wipes and sanitize again for your own peace of mind the things that you will be touching. That's a little bit extra, but I'm saying if you wanna be extra safe, you know, why the heck not? So everyone and their mama wants to go to the pool in Las Vegas because it is freaking hot right now in the summertime. As of right now, how they are ensuring social distancing is they require reservations to go to the pool or to on a first come first serve basis, which sometimes they fill up pretty fast. So if you do want to go to the pool, make sure you either make a reservation or show up pretty early so that you can get in. They are of course not filling to capacity so that they can allow for social distancing in between people. And when you're in the chairs or maybe in like a cabana, they are at least six feet apart. And I did notice that at the pool, they were doing some social distancing, which was which was good. The big question is, how is the nightlife in Vegas now that we are in a freaking pandemic? Let me tell you, it's not gonna be the same as it once was. There won't be those huge crowds where you're sweating on strangers and everyone is right up next to each other. No, no, none of that, of course. And right now the nightclubs are pretty much shut. I know that Intrigue, they're doing Intrigue Lounge. So I think what they're doing is they're not doing any general admission. It's more of like an intimate lounge feel. In terms of the day clubs, I have seen that daylight Beach Club, which is at the Mandalay Bay, is back open. They're doing cabana reservations, table reservations, etc. Encore Beach Club is doing EBC Pool, where it's no general admission. They recommend that you do a reservation, and they have the cabanas, all the other amenities as well. So they are doing their best to keep the Vegas feel happening during the summer, but it's definitely a very, very different summer than we have seen in the past years. In terms of social distancing at a restaurant itself, many, if not all, will require that you make a reservation first. They do this so that they are not filling the restaurant to capacity and to try and make social distancing a thing when it comes to separating tables. When my family and I dined at the Wynn, they seated us at a table, all the employees were wearing masks, it was all good. They even had a little placeholder on the table where we could rest our face mask, which I thought was very, very smart and keeps the face mask clean as well as the tables clean themselves. I thought that they were going to leave spaces in between tables, so having tables open open in between other tables with people to ensure that they are within six feet from each other. Sorry, I talk with my hands a lot, so you'll see lots of this going on. But they did not, and they placed a party right next to us, which I was a little bit like, eh, I, don't, I don't know about that. So yeah, that was just one downfall. I don't know how it is at other restaurants. I know that all the buffets are not open. However, the Wynn's buffet was open, as well as the Wicked Spoon at the Cosmo. Would I recommend a buffet right now? I'm not too sure. In terms of how crowded Vegas is, Vegas is seeing a lot of tourists. Is it as packed as it was in years past? No. It is not. Some top tips I would recommend if you are coming to Las Vegas to help keep you safe is to wear a mask at all times. I know it's required by the state, but definitely keep your mask on at all times. Also carrying hand sanitizer, making sure you have no symptoms before you come here. Social distancing as much as possible whenever you can. If you're gambling, try to go away from other people as well. If you're walking in a hallway in the casino and there's a large group of people, simply move to the other side. Doing frequent hand washing throughout your entire stay, not touching your face. All of the normal thing is that you would be doing at home, but now since you're in Las Vegas and around a lot of other people, just being more mindful of your hygiene. You can't expect the casinos to do all of the work for you. You must be smart about all of your decisions. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I know right now the hotels are open. That could easily change. And if you are coming to Las Vegas and you have the option to drive, please drive versus taking a plane. We are now getting into the Q&A portion of the video. These are questions that came from Faces and Aces LV podcast. I made an appearance on Chris's podcast last week. Thank you to all of the Faces and Aces LV podcast listeners for submitting your questions and I hope I can do a good job answering them. Just wanna say that this is not medical advice. This is just my personal opinion. So you could take it with a grain of salt, however you like. Let's just get right into the questions. Ooh, this is a good one. Huckleberry Girl asked, I'm curious about how COVID-19 has changed over time in terms of the types of patients she is seeing. Has the type of patient she sees in the ICU, age, gender, demographic, changed over time or stayed the same? Please tell her thank you for what she does. Thank you, girl. Huckleberry girl, you're very sweet. And yes, to answer your question. So I haven't worked with COVID patients really recently. I did a few months ago before I got sick, but I did reach out to my ICU doctor as well as my colleague that works on the floor about their input and this is what they have told me. They're seeing an increase of vastly black and Hispanic patients. They're also seeing a younger population starting to come into the ICU. Lots of patients with diabetes or they're pre-diabetic, also uncontrolled diabetes, possibly in diabetic ketoacidosis, which in the beginning, 
I did see a primarily elderly population. Diabetes was a common comorbidity that I was seeing in a lot of patients, but as this virus spreads, we are seeing more young people in the hospital now. To Bobby G's Gambling Times, he said, one other question I have would be about testing. How come some places put swab deep into the nasal cavity and other swab just inside the nostrils? Are they equally effective? Thank you to you and the nurse. Thank you, Bobby G, what up? I would say if you're seeing someone swab just inside the nostrils and not going deep, deep back there, and I'll include an infographic somewhere of how the swab should be done, then that test is likely not going to be accurate. You need to have a really good sample, so you gotta get up in there. When I got swabbed, I literally have been swabbed five times. I told them each time, get up in there deep. You gotta get all the way, just like, all the, all the way back. <laughs> I know that some places have been doing oropharyngeal, so it's just like swabbing the back of your throat. In terms of which one is more effective, the oropharyngeal I would not really recommend. There's just so much potential contamination that could happen in your mouth. You have your saliva, your own mouth bacteria, food, etc. So I would not recommend that one at all. Bobby G's Gambling Times asked, could you ask about her thoughts on masks, what they help with, what they don't, should we just wear them when in public and around others, and what type is better or worse, thanks. Okay, Bobby G. I know that there's a huge debate regarding masks. Should we wear them, should they not? I know that the public has been fed a lot of different information. No one really knows what to believe anymore, but masks are proven to decrease the spread of the virus. Think about it like this. This virus is spread primarily through respiratory droplets, right? So me talking right now, I'm having droplets spray out or you're singing or you're talking. If you're wearing any type of face covering or a mask, this will decrease the amount of droplets that you yourself are spreading to others. That is the purpose of masks. I would say that some masks are better than others. For the general public, a regular surgical mask or like a cloth mask is totally fine. Should you wear it in public? 100% yes. If you are in public, please wear a mask at all times. I know that they can be uncomfortable. It takes some getting used to. So my answer is yes. If you are in public or around others, please wear your mask. They do help. There was an analogy about peeing and pants. I will try and find the infographic and place it somewhere here. So say you're peeing and then you're wearing pants and another person next to you is also peeing and they're wearing pants, then your pee <laughs> won't be going onto each other quite as much because you have that layer covering as opposed to if you were just completely naked and your pee is just going everywhere. In terms of which ones are worse, I would say maybe a bandana or a scarf or a t-shirt. I've seen people do that. I wouldn't really recommend that. I would try and upgrade to a cloth or a surgical mask if you can. But something's better than nothing. So no hate, but if you can upgrade, maybe hit an upgrade. Does she think indoor dining will help to spread COVID? Guests don't have to wear a mask at their tables. Honestly, Honestly, yes, I do think so, because there was a study in Wuhan. In this study from the CDC's website, there was an outbreak of COVID at a restaurant in China. Basically, there was a diner at the restaurant that had come from Wuhan. She did not feel sick or show any symptoms of COVID, however, was infected. And she actually ended up infecting nine other people from three different families in the restaurant. And basically, the spread of COVID in the study is due to droplet transmission, of course, but it's also linked to the strong airflow from the AC propagating these droplets to the tables that were far away from the person that was infected. So yes, I do believe that indoor dining can spread COVID, so opt to eat outside if you can. 365 in Vegas asks, how serious should we be taking this virus? Who is right? The liberals acting like this thing is the most serious thing ever, or the conservatives not taking this seriously at all. Okay, I just wanna say, first and foremost, COVID-19 is not a political issue. This is a global health crisis, and I really wish that people would stop making it a political issue. With that being said, I would say that this virus is pretty serious. This virus is more contagious and more deadly than anything that we have seen in years past. This entire virus has completely turned the world upside down. It is something that should be taken seriously. I'm not saying that every single person that gets the virus is going to die. That is not what I'm saying at all, but you never know how your body is going 
going to respond and react to the virus. You never know if you can pass this along to someone and that virus can kill them. So I'm just saying, I would take it seriously if I were you. Let's not make it political. Let's treat this as a global health crisis, which is what it is. And you know, just take proper precautions. This is to John or Jplan72. Hello, John. Should someone spend long periods of time in a Vegas casino with or without masks? I would not feel personally comfortable to be in any public space for a long period of time with or without a mask. So I would say I would limit the amount of time that you spend in the Vegas casino, even if you have a mask on. It's okay to do in short spurts, but long periods of time I would say is pretty much a no-go. Okay, this is for Ace of Vegas one. Tell her thank you for all she's done. Also in her opinion, which healthcare worker at the hospital needs more support and thanks than they're getting. Examples being rad techs, medical assistant CNAs, etc. Thank you so much Ace of Vegas for your question. And thank you so much for thanking me. You're very kind. In terms of who doesn't get a lot of thanks, I think that respiratory therapists don't get enough thanks. They are doing so much incredible work during this pandemic and RTs are not one of the positions that people in the public really know about. They are the low key heroes of the entire pandemic. If you're looking to give thanks to your frontline workers, for one, wear your mask. Two, socially distance. Three, maybe drop them some food. Healthcare workers love food. I'm just saying. This question is from Romeo5501. 0881. What up, Romeo? Excellent. Looking forward to the podcast. My question is that I'm coming. Ask her what are my must do's while there. My favorite things to do. This is kind of cheesy, but I love the Bellagio water show. I still love that. It's a favorite of mine. If you go to the Cosmo, taking pictures at the chandelier area or going to the chandelier bar is always fun. There's so much great food in Vegas, both on the strip and off the strip. I would go on to Yelp and just search whatever type of food that you like and go to those places, look at reviews. Vegas has fantastic food. I'm a huge foodie, so that's always my number one recommendation. If you want to get away from crowds, there is a lot of great nature that is around Las Vegas. A little warning though, it is really, really, really hot. It is July right now. Vegas is in the hundreds, very, very dry heat. So if you are like hiking or anything like that, you have to be very, very careful and well hydrated. We have fantastic hikes up in Mount Charleston, Red Rock Canyon. One of my favorite hikes is Calico Basin. That one's a great one. Another good one in Mount Charleston is Mary Jane Falls. If you are into water sports, you can always get jet skis or boats and then go to the lake. That's always a fun time. The gardens inside the Bellagio are always so beautiful and they change depending on holidays or the season. I would definitely visit that. I would say that those are my must do's. And our last question is from Uberman Dan. Let her know she is the real hero, please. Thank you, Dan. That is very sweet. And that concludes this video. Please like this video and comment down below. What do you think of Las Vegas opening back up? Do you feel as though they have put in enough precautions to keep everybody safe? Would you personally visit or are you coming to visit anytime soon? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys and subscribe to your girl if you haven't already. I'm pretty active on Instagram if you want to add me on there. My username is at Nurse Chow. I love talking to you guys and I hope you guys are all staying safe. Bye!